Now, three decades after James Bolger was murdered at the age of two, his father is fighting to keep one of his killers behind bars for the rest of his life. It was a murder so brutal and unmanageable, it still stands as one of the worst in our history. In a moment, we'll hear from Ralph Bolger, but first, let's just remind you of what happened. James Bulger was abducted from a shopping centre in Merseyside by two ten-year-olds. They then tortured and murdered him on a railway line. John Venables and Robert Thompson became the youngest convicted murderers in British history. Eight years later, in 2001, they were freed with new identities. But John Venables, who's twice been released, has also twice been caught with images of child abuse. Now, he could once again be leaving jail. He's been granted a parole hearing, which will be held in private by a three-person panel. If released, he will yet again have a chance at freedom with a new identity. Now, James's father, Ralph Bulger, wants to make sure that never happens. We spoke to him earlier. Ralph, I really appreciate you being with us today. I know we've spoken before, and I know that this sort of thing for you is difficult. And before we talk about this latest parole hearing. Um, let's talk about James. He'd have been 33 now. This was um, a long, long time ago. Is it still fresh in your mind? What happens when you think every day about that <clears throat> horror? You sort of have to keep it back. Mm. It, is, it is hard, mm. but it's, it's something... I find if I keep my head into work, those memories don't come flooding back, mm. what happened? How so, do you survive? How did you survive? How did you get through those days? Just go day by day. You just got to one foot in front of the other and just do the best you can. And you've obviously thrown yourself into campaigning mm. on James's behalf. Now, can you tell us a little bit about this parole hearing that is upcoming with one of the, one of the now men who were responsible for the death of your son? Well, to be honest with you, I, I think you've got to do everything you can to try and keep him behind bars, because he's been a danger from day one. He's re-offended. Mm. To, to me, I think he enjoys what, he, what he's doing. And he's a ticking time bomb, just mm. waiting to go off, in, in my opinion. And now he's up for parole again. You feel it's your right, not only as a father, but as a responsible human being, knowing that there are other parents across oh. the country who, whose children could potentially be exposed to this man because oh. you don't believe he's changed? Well, the younger generation don't, don't really know about him. No. So, in, in order to let them know, you've got to do, do what you can to try and keep, keep them in. Um, I have no idea what somebody like you, Ralph, has gone through. I've got soon to be six kids and, I, and it literally I remember the story and it breaks my heart and I remember the first time we spoke and I could see the look in your face I don't you talk about putting one foot in front of the other you talk about trying to suppress certain things do you tell your other kids about James uh, I have a talk with me, me older girls and um, my youngest daughter she knows he, he's a brother but we, we don't really go into detail with anything I'm not ignoring the parole thing for now. What I'm trying to get an idea of is how angry 30 years down the line you still are. Same as day one. Yeah. What would you do if you saw him? What would you do? I know what I'd do, and I can sit here absolutely categorically and say I'd serve time if somebody did that mm. to my child. I'm not trying to cause anything but honesty. I'm looking at you in your eyes. I can see that 30 years is a heartbeat. This boy's innocence was, was taken away. There are some people, mm. and I remember... I remember Ralph saying this to you about eight years ago. Somebody once said to me that when something heinous like this happens, the only way that you can survive and move forward is if you learn to forgive. Now, I truly will honestly tell you I couldn't forgive that, and you're shaking it. How? how? No. Wait, I, I could never forgive him. No. And like, like you say, you've got children of your own, and... <clears throat> would you want him getting out and being near your children? So, I think you should rot in hell for yeah. all eternity, that's so, what I think. So, put, putting them back into the public, where, where I think he will do this again. Mm. Who's going to be held responsible for it? Who, Who makes the decision yeah, about this so, parole? So is the, it a parole board, is it? Well, the, the parole board, each and every one of them, 
who, who release them should be held responsible for it. Mm. So I mean, I, I don't know about what you think, Nick, but there's me, the way I am, and I know you, Ralph, thinking, so these parole board uh, officials who are going to make this decision, do they know about the case? Have they ever had a child? Would they ever have imagined going through what you and your family have gone through? No. Well, they, they, they can go home, sit back, not, not think about it again. But once he, he's on the streets, it's, it's the public that's at, at danger, so... Mm. And am I right in saying that he's been granted anonymity right. for his entire life? Yeah. Wow. Um, and it's your belief, correct me if I'm wrong, that these behaviours that he has um, displayed in the times that he's been released from prison, the child abuse images, etc., it shows a pattern of behaviour that could potentially lead to physically harming mm, another yeah. child. Well, he was on that, the, the dark, dark web, was it? The dark it? web, yeah. <clears throat> And to find out how to have sex with ch children Jesus. and to uh, n not be caught. That, See, the, the, that the, sort of tells you that he, he's waiting to, and, 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 to and, do and, you it. Know, and you know, it's really interesting, isn't it? This, this sort of conversation, because when I, this makes my blood boil, this piece of whatever will come out if he gets out in November. And let me tell you something, this show and I are going to do everything, and Nicola, because this should never happen. This guy's going to come out. His anonymity is going to cost the British taxpayer hundreds of thousands of pounds. It is proven, because, as you say, he's been taken back in Sam, several Sam, times, yeah. that he could do it again. And yet that's... What is wrong, Ralph? What's wrong with that? That's ridiculous, isn't it? It's just the, like, the justum system. Just... It's failed. And repeatedly uh, failed you uh, as well. Because, you know, people could argue, well, obviously, he was a child himself when the initial... Mm. You know, Can I jump in for a minute? Because he knows what I'm going to say. Yeah. It was proven afterwards, after James was killed, that they had tried to go up to a little boy yeah. five minutes before. It's absolute, should rot in hell for all eternity. It is absolute, mm. undeniable... Premeditated. Evil, undeniable evil. But then, as an adult as well to keep reoffending with crimes mm. that involve children. I think it's really important what you said about mm. people nowadays, younger people, not really being aware of the case. I'm 34, so I only knew mm. of the case because my parents warned me about it, no. because they'd seen about it in the news. I'm expecting my first baby. And thank you. But I, I worry now, I, I've been exposed to this brand new world of, of you know, child safety. And perhaps, yes, I six months ago, might have thought, you know, people deserve a second chance. But what you've just explained to us there so eloquently is that this man is a danger to society. It feels to me like you're the only person who sees that. Mm. Well, every child, I, I, I'm, in my opinion, is at risk yeah. while he's out. So. Yeah. And, I, and, and that's what I was trying to say to you, Ralph, that, that, and it's a really interesting point that you make, because it is different the minute you have a kid. Yeah. And then the thought of that child being taken away from you. Um, you have kept fighting, though, Ralph. You have fought for the last however many years. Um, was that survival? Was it for James's memory? What does keep <coughs> that going inside you? That's, that's for James, and to make sure it doesn't really happen again. It, if, if I can do anything to prevent it happening again, I'll, I'll, I'll do what I can. Yeah. If you had to sum up what it's done to you as a man, what would you say? Destroyed me. But you're fighting on... And you're doing this for other people. Yeah. And your strength really, really shines through. And we're so grateful for the work that you're doing because you could so easily have left this in your past and you would have every right to do that. But you're not doing this for yourself anymore, you're doing it for other people. Yeah. Are you OK? What would give you some semblance of peace? Just keep on it. I'm going to look directly down camera one and I'm going to say something to the Justice Secretary in this country, Alex Chalk, who has been in the job six months. We're going to reach out to you, Alex Chalk. I'd like somebody from the government, from the Justice Department, which at best is very, very wrong in this instance, to explain to Talk Today 
how it is that somebody who can murder a child in a premeditated way be released on several occasions only to re-offend, and as Nicola quite rightly said, child abuse uh, accusations. Why the father of that victim, 30 years on, Mr Chalk, needs to come on a television pr programme to prove through his sadness and his, the horror that he's had to deal with, he and his family, that that man should stay behind bars. You're the man that controls this. We want to hear from you. Ralph, I said to you eight years ago, and I'll say to you now, mate, um, I think you're incredible. And I think that, I know, I'm not trying to upset you, James would look down and he would say, Dad, thank you, because it's about a memory. I don't know how you control your anger. I'm sure there have been moments you've lost it over the last 30 years. Um, for people watching this, put, put into words that moment when you heard, when you found out. It's like it all opened up and swallowed them. Yeah. Your, your life just ends. And there's no closure, oh. I think, in a situation like this. I, I think I've not been through anything close to what you've been yeah. through. But I believe that closure is a myth yeah. that people tell themselves they'll eventually reach. I don't think it does happen. What does happen is time passes and you, you learn how to cope <sighs> in different ways. Ish. 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 But what you're doing is taking positive action. Mm. And as I said, you're not solely grieving, you're taking action to make sure that this man, within the best of your ability, is not exposed to more children yeah. and is not able to harm other people. And I hope that we here you know, will support you. the family, he's other lives, so... Yeah. The pals get that bait, they've got to keep him in. Yeah. What's the answer? Have you... I mean, I appeal to Alex Chalk, and trust me, I'll be like a dog with a bone. What's the... What do you do? Do you go through your MP? What have you done? What, what's the response been from the parole board? Oh. Like I say, I've been fighting, fighting this for 30 years and you just get in my way with them. I think, I think for me, as an outsider who cares about you, because I've met you before, I think, I think what I find so wrong, <sighs> and I don't mean to talk in the wrong way to you, but, but to me there are evil people. And I'm yeah. sick to death of hearing, you know, oh, but we need to rehabilitate. There are certain people who do not they, deserve they, to be rehabilitated. True, Ralph? They, they, they can't be re rehabilitated. They've spent millions on them. And that, it's evil. Their, their little project, uh, that, that went wrong, you know what I mean? And it's proved to have gone, gone wrong through, throughout the years, like, mm. the way he's re-offended. He, he likes what he, what, he, what he does. He likes it. That, pff, the old top and bottom there. He wants to get another kid. That, that's the way I feel deeply. And that, any, any person, any adult watching you say that through the horror of what you've been through should absolutely agree with us mm. that this man should never, ever, ever be allowed out. That's it. What did you hope for coming here today? <sighs> to be honest with you, to try and keep him in. Trying to someone to back me up and and the fact that you've been asked at all these parole board hearings in the past to read out your victim impact statement, only to then see him released, it must feel almost hopeless. Well, the, the, the thing, thing with him, he, he was taught to lie from early age, mm. and th this is what what the system was created as well. So, he, he, when he goes and sits sits amongst them. It, He'll just lie through his teeth. He'll and tell them what, what do you want to hear because he's being t trained by them to, to do that. You know what I mean? So. And I would want a parole board to answer me this question. How on earth can they assess how safe a man is to be, come back into society when in prison he's not exposed to children, he's not exposed to the dark web? How can mm. they possibly say, say that he's say, allowed... If you had a child that had been murdered, would you allow this piece of rubbish out? Can I ask you a question that I'll probably get... Criticised for. Ralph Bodger, should uh, life mean life? Yeah, definitely. For something like that. You are an incredible man. James would be so proud of you, and I can't even begin to put into words what the last 30 years have been like, but thank you so much indeed for coming on.